Hi, Eric Schoenfeld here with TechCrunch. I'm with Jim Breyer, the uh, man with the Midas touch. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, partner at, at Axel and on the board of Facebook, News Corp, Hi. Walmart, I'm missing Brightco, yes. Dell. Right. Dell. Yes, yes, you're a busy man. Yeah, so uh, so what play, uh, are you bill, really excited about now? Like, when you're looking at, at uh, you know, all the companies that come across your transom, are there certain areas that you're particularly excited about? Are there areas that you feel are played out? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think when you can marry personal passion uh, and just intuitive love, for certain segments or businesses or entrepreneurs, it makes the investment business that much more interesting. There's always a tough day, there's always a rough day, uh, no matter what the company. And if there's a love for that kind of uh, technology investing, if you will, uh, it makes it a lot more interesting. So some of the areas we're very focused on would be, uh, at a high level, social, mobile applications and services globally, and so we spend as much time focused on China as we do the United States. In fact, we have more partners today in China than we do right. in Palo Alto. Uh, very focused on Brazil, for instance. I just returned from a week in Brazil where we were looking at applications built upon the emerging social networks, which uh, right. pleased to report Facebook is one of them. Uh, very focused on the intersection of media, technology, and consumer commerce. And I think that there are enormous opportunities for entrepreneurs in areas such as next generation social TV, mm -hmm. uh, next generation entertainment applications, again, that are very fundamental and integrated with the social networks. And from a mobile perspective, worldwide, no surprise, many of the very best applications are being built first and foremost on mobile platforms secondarily on social platforms and the computer or the website as a design center uh, for the world is certainly decreasing in terms of where the emphasis is. Well, let's talk about media mm -hmm. uh, to start with. Uh, I think there's a lot of changes that are, are happening because of technology and media, both on the production side and on the consumption side. So maybe we can tackle those uh, from two different angles. Uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg was here yesterday was talking about you know just how they're trying to speed up the, the time to render an animation so that it doesn't take eight hours to do a three second piece of animation that they could do it in real time uh, and you know technologies that are impacting the production of, of uh, movies and other media um, you know are accelerating just as, as everything else so do you see media companies getting a competitive advantage from you know, harnessing the right technologies? And is it just the high-end movie, movie companies, movie studios, or is it everybody? Well, I think with Jeffrey and some of the well-capitalized studios, 20th Century Fox, Time Warner, uh, they will get some advantage from using new technologies to, to drive experience. 3D is going through a phase where it's certainly overrated for some period of time, but 10 years from now, 3D will be very fundamental, mm -hmm. perhaps as fundamental as HD. However, what gets us really excited as venture capital investors is looking at how many of the new video immersion experiences, video technologies, are intersecting social networks and allowing the consumption in ways that we would have never expected. And so starting to experiment with how a dark night or an inception, which are legendary films, can be delivered not only through theatrical, but on a worldwide basis through streaming on social networks where if the two of us love dark night, we may very well love uh, what the next generation uh, movie might be that is related to Dark Knight, but not necessarily Batman. Uh, that kind of tapping into social networks, social interests, and allowing that experience to be very seamless, uh, to me is where a lot of not only the large studios, but perhaps even more importantly, many independent filmmakers can really see a great benefit from some right. of these new technologies and an ability to reach audiences 
that would have been impossible when it was large distribution deals in the past. Right. So you're talking, you're, you're getting into the consumption side, which I think is the more interesting part of it. Uh, it I always wonder. You see a lot of these. Uh, demos and, and small startups that, that do interesting things with like augmented reality, right? I mean, yesterday we had uh, uh, the CEO of Autonomy show. He he put a camera up to um, the, an iPad camera on a poster, and then there was like a, a little you know video virtual uh, guy that popped up in there, right? And that's for advertising. But you could easily imagine those being media experiences. Uh, are, is anyone sort of rethinking that whole you know, media experience where you're augmenting reality and you're seeing it on your tablet so that the experience on a tablet or on a, on a mobile phone is completely different than the experience on a big screen? Well, there are a lot of entrepreneurs thinking that through right now. And the technology in some cases uh, either is being pushed very hard or is in labs. And they might be at very large company labs. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've seen some brilliant technologists who are at some very large technology companies that have really pushed the leading edge on this. I think what uh, we wrestle with as investors, we'll see about 10,000 media entrepreneurial business plans globally a year. Wow. And we'll invest in about 10. Uh, and examples would be games, uh, Angry Birds would be one example, where my partner Rich Wong, just a superstar as I've mentioned, uh, flew off to Helsinki, intersected it. And what we saw was not just a series of point games, but a series of experiences that could move beyond uh, what would be multiplayer or mobile games into new areas where there may very well be opportunities to continue to build and enhance a portfolio of not only gaming experiences, but social experiences. So you saw their media. pipeline and you were so excited about their pipeline that that's why you invested as opposed Absolutely. to... Absolutely. As opposed to... And I the mean, people. And the and people, people, right. Because right now what we see is Yes, this amazing brand, right, that came out of nowhere, and right. they're, they've got the plush toys, and they've got the cookbooks, and that's right. all great. But there is this question of, is this like a, another Cabbage Patch Kids, right, that's going to be a fad that's going to move on, or is there something deeper there that, you know, are they going to have something that's, that's not even Angry Birds, just a different brand? but that leverages some of the same sort of capabilities. We, we really like their pipeline, mm -hmm. and we really like how they're thinking about what Angry Birds can be as they think about new platforms, new media types. So what, what and, can Angry Birds be? Uh, Angry Birds could be a very significant media and gaming company, mm -hmm. which is not just Angry Birds on the iPhone or the Android or on Facebook, but a series of experiences that extend beyond that, which also really get into this idea that consumers and customers really do want to use the mobile platform as the center of their information sharing. Right.